Hello guys, Asian Game Plays, I'm Fabio Pisco and today we have another video. The video of today is quite simple and in fact it is how to overclock Ryzen 5 3600 on a B350 motherboard. In this case it is the Asus B350 Strix. Easy. Okay, I always, and I always call this kind of a tutorial, but it isn't a tutorial per se, uh, it is kind of... It is more kind of uh, me showing my settings for you and giving some advices. So not a full and complete tutorial uh, per se, do this, do that. Okay, just me showing my settings, which usually work, of course. Um, and giving some advices, some tips on how to do it and what to do and what not to do. So, that's... <laughs> a few moments later... And well, that's it. All I want is you guys to watch my video and learn something. And for example, overclock your CPU to get better performance, maybe your RAMs, but carefully. Um, and that's all I want you guys to, um, to see, I want you to learn. And that's what the sponsor of this video wants too, wants you to learn. So the sponsor of today is Skillshare. Skillshare is a worldwide platform that focuses mostly Okay, they focus mostly on teaching, so you can you can pay monthly and, for example, um, see Photoshop classes. Uh, you also have art classes. You have writing classes. You have a lot, a lot of classes. You have even, for example, HTML and CSS classes. But really, the most interesting in my case and the the ones that I liked the most were the Photoshop classes, no doubt. But still, they have a lot. And when I say a lot, I mean really a lot of classes, even for example gaming development, which is pretty interesting in my opinion. And you can get this all for roughly $14 a month, which is actually uh, 11 euros, which is actually $13, but whatever. Most of people will pick the annual pack, which is 8 euros a month which will give something like $11. So it is a pretty, pretty good deal. You can watch tons and tons of classes and, well, they are great. I must admit that some of the ones I watched are really, really good and really helped me a lot. So I'm really happy to be sponsored by Skillshare. And also don't forget, go and use the link in the description to have two free months. Two completely free months, so you'll have to pay only 10 out of 12 months. Two months of free classes to watch. Pretty great. And well guys, that's it. Without any further delays, let's go to the part you really want to watch. The Overclocking Guide. Don't forget, hit like, subscribe and share the video because that really helps a lot. And follow me on my social media. Don't forget, leave also a comment in the comment section. So guys, for today's video I have a video I recorded of my of my BIOS, okay, so on the B350 Strix. Um, I have this and I will just simply pass through the video and giving you some tips and advices. That's all, sorry for the image quality, but at least you can understand what I'm showing. So okay, this is the main page, now we have the AI Tweaker. So. First of all, the memory frequency. Take notes that um, every, ev almost every uh, Ryzen 5 3600 CPU can do and can easily push 3600 MHz. Okay, it depends on your RAMs because not all RAMs are equal, of course. Maybe uh, your RAMs will need more, m higher timings, I mean, or lower timings. Uh, higher timings mean more latency and less latency is better, so tighter or smaller timings are better. In this uh, current I have memory frequency, frequency sorry, of uh, DDR4 3600 MHz. Okay, the DDR4. And now we have the FCLK. FCLK is a new thing that we have on the Ryzen uh, 3000 generation. Okay, because the... Um, uh, the architecture changed a bit, it did, so we now have, for example, the FCLK, which is the Infinity Fabric Speed. Okay, in the, um, in the older generations, 
we had the, infi the infinity fabric speed locked. Now we can overclock it. So as for you say, if you use, for example, up to 3600 MHz, the, um, uh, this, talking about RAM, of course, the infinity fabric will be at 1, 1 ratio. So it will be a lot faster because the older generations were 1 half. So imagine if you, if you have a speed of 3600, your speed of the FCLK and the infinity fabric um, transfers will only be, in this case, um, 1800 for example and now we have the FCLK we can overclock it if we if we want to sorry <laughs> uh, today is not my best day anyway so we have the FCLK I put it on manual because if you for example change or go higher than 3600 megahertz it will decouple automatically going um, to 1 2 instead of 1 1 which will increase a lot the latency so going on, okay, now we have the CPU core ratio, I'm using 42, so here, as you see, I'm using 42, which will lead to um, 4.2 gigahertz, which is kind of pretty, it's decent, and it is kind of okay for the Ryzen 5 3600, it's like the sweet spot between voltage and frequency, if you, if you go higher, for example, 4.3, um, maybe 4.3 for the X version, but for the non-X version, 4.2 is the sweet spot. When going 4.3, I, for example, need a lot, a lot more than the voltage I'm using. I'm using around 1.35, 1.37 on load, and, well, the word says 1. Point, says, sorry, 1.38, but it's kind of in between of 1.35 and 1.37 so for 4.3 I needed a lot more voltage as for the performance bias I use the performance bias on none because I don't want any bias I want real performance and I don't want software to tell me it is faster but it isn't actually so I'm not going into that okay once again Let's see what's coming next. Okay, now the Precision Boost Overdrive. Let's open it. Okay, and the Precision Boost Overdrive, I always put it on Disable. We have the Manual, the Enable and the Disable. I always disable PBO, so Precision Boost Overdrive, because I don't want the, um, the frequency to, to start scaling and dropping after that. I simply want a stable and fixed so not dynamic, a fixed frequency, and that's why we're gonna disable PBO. As for the rest, you can leave it on auto. Uh, go now for the DRAM timings, no, DG, VRM, okay, let's see the voltages first. As, I see, as you see, I have 42, so you can use, for example, 40, 40, uh, you'll need a lot a lot less voltage for 40 for example for 4 gigahertz you'll need for example 1.25 volts which is way way lower uh, but for 42 you need around 1.35 1.37 around this and you'll be fine with this voltage so as you see in this kind of motherboard you need to go offset voltage you'll have the manual okay you'll have the manual and the offset the auto and the offset you must choose for example, the offset, use the plus and minus signs to do the, the plus voltage or less voltage and then select the, the offset voltage you want to apply in order to... It's, it's kind of easy, just go to the, to the voltage you have here, in this case it's already overclocked, but go to the voltage and select the voltage you want to have. For example, if you have here, before overclocking, 1.2 volts, simply add, for example, 0 um, point, uh, let's say 0 0.15 and you'll have the 1.30 something you want, okay? Just gradually um, raise the voltage up to the, the things you want, up to the voltage you want. As for the SOC voltage, you select the same method, so offset voltage, blah 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 blah, plus sign and you select the voltage you want. In this case I wanted around uh, well, between 1.10 and 1.17, it's, it's what I advise you if using a Ryzen 5 3600. 
you don't need to go higher unless you are pushing really, really high uh, ramp speed voltages and unless you are overclocking a lot your infinity fabric, then you need more voltage. Because mostly this is the this is the voltage of the infinity fabric of the FCLK you've seen above. Okay, sorry if I'm being a little, uh, a little annoying, but I I'm trying to explain the best I can. So as for the DRAM voltage, I'm using 1.47, and most of you will say something like 1.47. That's fucking high. That's not high. That's a little high, just a little. But in fact, it is not that high. You, I'm using Samsung B die, um, and for extreme sub timing, so for for the extreme turning of the sun. Uh, the, uh, Jesus, I really hate this language. <laughs> so guys, sorry. For the extreme tuning of the, the sub-timings, you need to apply a lot more voltage. For example, on my X570, I only need 1.46 volts and I can do even, even smaller sub-timings. Uh, but whatever, 1.45 is the base I advise. Um, after 1.45, up to 1.5 volts, you are safe. After 1.5 volts, your RAMs will degrade faster way faster than, than they should, so don't go over much over 1.45 volts for daily usage. Okay, that's what I just said, 1.47 volts. Um, okay, as for the other voltages, leave them on auto. If you are having some, let's say, stability issues, you can raise a bit the VPP memory voltage and the VDDP standby voltage. Just raise them a bit, don't exaggerate, just a little bit, step by step until you are stable. Okay, there's nothing more, there's not much more to say here. Uh, let's see where we can see more, okay. Okay, let's go to the DG and VRMs. So this is the load line calibration settings. Let me try to explain the best way I can. So the load line serves to, um, to raise the voltage when needed, or for example, maintain it. Uh, let's say, for example, the CPUs in the normal in the normal state. If you apply some load to them, some let's say a game, uh, some benchmark uh, rendering. If you apply load on them, the voltage will drop a bit, and you don't want that because if you are using manual voltage, you want the the voltage to be stable or even raise a bit if needed. And that's why the CPU load line calibration and the C the SOC load line calibration are here. If you use the medium settings on this motherboard, okay, the medium settings, uh, the, um, the load voltage will be kind of the same as the manual voltage you select, and I wanted that. So imagine if you select here 1.37 volts, the load line calibration will make the load, um, the load voltage be the same as you selected, so 1.35 volts. Whatever. As for the SOC load line calibration, I like to put it on regular, because when on load, it will maybe decrease a bit, but not that much. So medium on the CPU load line and uh, on the SOC load line, regular. These are my best settings on the B350 streaks. Uh, okay, as for the rest, just leave it on auto. Don't mess with it much because it may mess with your stability and you don't want that. Now go for the DRAM timings, okay. That's an interesting part. So as for the DRAM, just really, really, I'm being serious, don't copy my settings. Unless you are using, for example, Samsung b uh, for example, my RAMs are 4400, so 4400 um, 4, MHz CL19, and that's why I can achieve uh, these results. But don't copy my settings. If you are using a more let's say a more standard RAMs, a uh, more standard RAM kit, for example, let's say 3200 MHz CL16, you may have to use, for example, instead of 1416, 14, 14, 28, you might try to use, for example, 16, 16, 16, 16, 16 36, or even, let's say, um, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18, 38, that's the best. And, well, these are my sub-timings, they are pretty sweet, but okay, Samsung be die, like I said before. Okay, these are the timings. 
Now the TRC, the TRC is quite low actually, but I it, I can make it even lower if I want to. Uh, the T4 is a value that you can also decrease a lot. It's at 32, but you can, let's say, decrease it to up to 16 with Samsung B-Die. If you don't have Samsung B-Die, don't mess with T4. I call it T4. Don't mess with T4 uh, because you'll get instability or instability. Yes, an instability. As for the other timings, uh, just mess a bit if you want better latency, just mess a bit with TRFC. That's really important. Most RAM kits won't even allow you to mess with TRFC. So if you try a different value, a lower value on TRFC and uh, the computer doesn't put, then it's because of this. Don't mess with this value. So TRFC. Don't mess with it because it may, again, uh, cause instability. Uh, okay. Going down, as for the rest, if you are a more uh, standard user, just go auto on every on every sub timing, just select the main timings, like I said, for example, 3600 megahertz, 18, 18, 18, 18, 18 38, and you are okay, completely okay. Uh, don't mess with the sub timings because you can get uh, not good results at all. Okay, as for the Proc ODT, Proc ODT can, can also fix much but, uh, and many problems, can also fix many problems. Uh, one of them is also instability, but on the latest BIOS, you don't really need to, to care much, um, to care much with PROC ODT, but if you are having instability, try to select a value from 48 to 80 ohms. So 48, 80 ohms, not more, just between those values, those values are safe, and more is not better at all, just depends on the RAM kit you have and the motherboard. As for the command rate, so, 1T is faster than 2T, of course. Uh, it is the time that it takes to make a cycle of clock frequency. So, 1T or 2T, 1T is half, half of the 2T, so 1T will be better, obviously, uh, but 2T if you want more stability, you can select 2T. So it's up to you. Some RAMs won't even do 1T uh, after some frequency. For example, some RAMs after, after 3000 megahertz won't do, won't do 1T and you'll have to decrease it to 2T. In this case, gear down mode enable. What gear down mode enable will do and power down mode enable will do. Gear mode down will just allow the RAM to down clock itself uh, in a fraction of second when needed and the power down mode enable will make the, um, the RAM uh, drop or, or yes drop drop the voltage when needed also in a fraction of second most of the times of course um, having the gear down mode disabled is better is better because um, the, the RAMs will be faster so but there's a catch in in between between this, so between the, the command rate, the CMD, the command rate and the gear down mode. So if you use, for example, 1T and gear down mode enabled, your stability will be quite better, but it will be like 1.5T instead of 1T, a real 1T per se. If you have the gear down mode disabled and force 1T, then it will be really, really, really 1T. You can, for example, check ADA64 results and you can check them pretty easily about this. So if you select 1T with gear down mode disabled, your latency will be, your RAM latency will be quite lower. Um, that's what I say. So gear down mode enabled, 1T, it's kind of a 1.5T, but having gear mode down enabled will allow you a higher megahertz overclock. So you can make your frequency, you can make it go higher if you enable gear down mode. So it's kind of a, it's kind of a trade. So if you want higher frequency, just enable gear down mode and go up. If you want the same frequency but better performance, if you can't go higher and you want better performance, just disable the gear down mode and try to, to get the most out of that frequency. Okay, gear down mode, power down, enable, let's go a bit further, power down, and yes, the other settings. Okay, leave this on auto. Sorry, it's kind of 
this is being kind of um, kind of long, but I really want you to to see. I really want you to to understand how these things work. I'm really trying to explain the best way I can. So now go to the advanced, and we have the AMD CVS. So if you want the max performance you can get out of your system, what do you want? You don't want any power saving features, right? So max performance is not the same as power saving features. So yeah, we're gonna disable that. So, but let's see first the, the advanced. So advanced and CPU configurations. Now and here you have the virtualization if you want, for example, using VirtualBox, um, for example, uh, Windows inside, Windows and etc. Virtualization, you need to have the SVM enabled. As for the SMT, it is the simultaneous multi-threading, the same as hyper-threading on, for example, Intel, Intel Core i7s, Intel Core i9s, for example, hyper-threading. So, for example, instead of, if you disable the, the SMT, uh, the Ryzen 5 3600 will have 6 cores and 6 threads. With the simultaneous multi-threading enabled, it has 6 cores and 12 threads. Kind of simple, okay? Now, finally going to the AMD CBS, okay? And no, we are going to the AMD overclocking and we go to the Precision Boost Overdrive, but it is already disabled because I disabled it uh, before, so okay. Okay, back, and finally AMD CBS. So, on the AMD CBS, you need to disable the core performance boost, so your frequency is static, 4.2, and the global C state control because you don't want your frequency to go lower or yeah mostly lower you don't want P states you just want the um, the frequency to be static and most efficiently on top okay as for the rest of the settings use the auto because it is the best okay and I think there's not much more to say okay let's go a bit Okay, let's see once again. So CPU voltage, uh, RAM, 3600 MHz, FCLK, the Infinity Fabric speed is half of that, 1800 MHz, 4.2 GHz on the CPU at 1.38 volts, 1.17 volts on the SOC voltage, 1.47 volts on the RAMs. And that's it. Not much, not much more to say, guys. Really, sorry for the long video. I don't like to do these kind of long videos. But I really wanted to explain the best way I could. So, guys, don't forget. Hit like, subscribe, share the video. Leave a comment on the comment section. Because that is really, really important to me. Um, and, well, see you in the next video. Thanks for watching one more time.